rolling video, rolling video. You can't do that to start the show. Yes, I can. I can Why? start the show oh. however I want. Just... I thought we were going to do like a countdown. Get no. Into what do you need this yeah. 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 Oh, Dave's, yeah. Dave's, Dave's oh. been in such fear that Evan is going to fire him that now he is... He has gotten us to a point in technology where you don't even need a countdown anymore. No. Well, I give it to Dave. Our chairs are all about six feet away from each other, so that's good. I mean, we're, we're plush yeah. on hand yeah. sanitizer in the office. Yeah. Nobody. I mean, we're not very. We're not huggers. No. To we begin don't, I with, like, definitely never uh, touch you. Really, yeah, I don't. Well, I don't yeah, I don't know the last time that either. I have touched either of you. You, you're kind of like if you were the catalyst of the virus, you, you would be who I think patient zero would look like. I look yeah. like patient zero for You've a got virus. A coli. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's of eating disease. We thought Jared had uh, Corona or COVID because he got insanely sick of very abruptly, and then he first thought he threw out his back. Yeah. Then it went into well, that's what it started stones. with. It started with back pain, and then it went into then went into a coli or kidney. Yeah. Did yeah. they know which one? It, it was an E. coli family bacteria. So it started, it started, <laughs> with, a, started with a TH or something. It was a really long, long I have word. to say, after your explanation, when it was all said and done, I felt better because I thought you just went out and ate raw chicken somewhere. No. And then I was like, it's the chickens at your house. But your your excuse was you were hosing down. I was pressure washing. Yeah. Without was, a mask. Yep. and. That, yeah, that was probably the from my perspective, Matt. This is all your fault because this Whoa. all started when you you made Jared exercise, and then all this bad stuff started happening right oh, after. That. Oh, hold on, hold on, get... hold on. What? This is true. I was fine. Yep. yep. Until I tried the Black Rifle Coffee Get Up. Yeah. Yeah. This is so all you're saying. Fault. Exercise gives you a cold. You should run... a bacteria infection. <laughs> you yeah. should run the CDC and be the yeah. virologist. I should. I mean, if that's I'm your reason. after that. I, I don't know if any of you guys have ever had E. coli, but it is not a it's not a good time. <laughs> no, you know why we I haven't. <laughs> you know you know why we haven't. Why? Do I need to explain this to you again? I've explained this to you <laughs> multiple times. There is a perception, and most perceptions are reality for a wide variety of reasons. But there is a perception that you're filthy, like a dirty, disgusting human being, not because of typing. Remember the joke I used to say about you having a ceviche guy that would show up in yeah, his 1998 yeah, yeah. Saturn yeah. and deliver you warm sushi out of the trunk of his car? And ceviche. Yes. Sushi, ceviche. There's so, a reason for that. And there's also a reason why we used to talk about you eating toilet sandwiches because of the way that you look. And not only the way that you look, <laughs> but the things that you do. <laughs> so it's not necessarily who you are. It's just the way that well, you I'm look. Not like some, I'm not like Balin Hay. Well, that would well, no. be exercise. That well, would be exercise. Well, yeah. we're in the midst of a, a crisis and a pandemic in which, like, the, the biggest thing to take away is, like, we need to be religious about washing our hands. Yeah. We have to wash our hands. Yep. And then you. I go got sick cleaning. That. Technically, I got <laughs> sick from cleaning. No, that was the story. Wait, wait, That's the story. Semantics. That would be like. I wiped my butt and I was cleaning, but I did it with my fingers <laughs> and then sucked on my fingers. No, and then I no, got pink eye or whatever. I got the pressure washer because I wanted to clean up an area of the yard that I had moved the chickens away from and get all that stuff out of there. Like I was cleaning. In all seriousness, like because uh, this is not a joke, he did get something from the E. coli family. You said, yeah. how, what? What did it feel like? I'm curious because. Hurts so bad. Like what? Be you don't specific. get like like it's just from the top of your like gastrointestinal kind of thing. It, it's your stomach and all of your intestines. Like and it feels really? it feels. Were you like, throwing up? No, you you just it's just you have hardcore stomach pain that's from the bottom of your ribs to like pretty much right at the bottom of your intestines. Huh. It just hurts continuously with no. What's your pain at one of ten? Oh, ten. All day long, and really? it doesn't it, it doesn't come in phases. It doesn't it doesn't like like just get worse. Constant. It's just constant for like seventy hours. So you were just in pain. Do you have diarrhea? With yes, you? once oh, an okay. Once an hour, oh. you were you were throwing every ounce of liquid that you have in your body mm -hmm. out, and that's where that's where your kidneys and stuff come in because your body is skipping. The, I'm sure your kidneys are probably the, shutting the down. The water, yeah. Did like you're not. IV like I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. Like uh, actually, like six of them. 
Oh, like, shit, I really? went through two lactated ringers, like which when you know you know you're getting the good stuff when you get a when you get an LR, you know. <laughs> yeah. And then they, what was the medication prescribed for that? It's a uh, antibiotic, like a really hardcore. Like, did you take any of that? Yeah, I took it all. Okay. Well, that was the thing is like, not at once. Literally like, did you, the day did you read the Bible I was and done, take it as prescribed. So it was a, it was a five day to a day five day like day five is when the pain went away and like. But even then, like, I'm still dealing with the aftermath. Like, I still have, like, every few hours, you'll get the pain back for a little bit. And mm. then, you know, hardcore diarrhea. Is E. coli so. a bacteria then? Yeah. Obviously, if they yep. put you on antibiotics. Yep. So what was with the kidney stone? They saw one in there because, again, it, it, I mean, it was. <laughs> so you do have a kidney stone. <laughs> so you do have a kidney stone. Stop. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? Like, like you, you look at you. You look at me like I told you so. No, I just I, <laughs> your lifestyle and our jokes are so close to reality. <laughs> <laughs> They're not jokes anymore. Like, it's like so, the nitrates that you've consumed as being Lord Hot Dog. Yeah. And the things that you have done, just gen, just generally, the things you have done. Like you're, you're, people say that you're defined by your choices, right? Because you are your choices. So the choices you have made have defined you. And those choices have led you to be defined by my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like, it was like an episode of house, like, because at first, like full house. No, the, the house MD, you know, Dr. House. You never saw Dr. House? <laughs> I've never seen it. You've never seen it. This house? is the fucking dumbest conversation we've had on this <laughs> no, show. No, no, it literally it's is like about house. It's like it, it's always every episode was the, a patient comes in, they think it's something general, and they treat it, and they give him, and, and he then gets house worse. Comes in and yeah. he does this crazy math problem, finds out it's like the one percent of one percent rare cancer, and, and ends up curing. Yeah. It oh, so okay, it's like it's it. always okay. it's I always it. oh like when I first went to the ER, you know they threw they threw. Me on morphine and gave me a bunch Seriously? of Seriously? Morphine? Oh, yeah. Holy yeah. shit. Morphine. Damn, dude. They were like, then, why were they they just like jumped you, to morphine? You were I was in the hospital probably a total of like nine hours. Like both mm-hmm. times. Like four and a half. See, six, you shouldn't have went to the hospital and we could have just done a video where Evan plays house and Evan has yeah. to try and figure out what's going on. I'm gonna try to figure you out. <laughs> <laughs> I think we would have got it. It's really all like homeopathic remedies. <laughs> like, Here, all right, eat this, this mushroom. I need what kind eat, of mushroom is this? I need you to eat all of this cayenne pepper. Yeah. I'm just sweating and dying. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we would have figured that out real quick. I would have I would have Googled terrible stomach pains. Well no, patient because the has stomach, live the stomach chickens pains and ducks didn't, in didn't kitchen. Start. A coli. So got it. So that was the thing is it doesn't it didn't start with so it started with you know i thought i hurt my back then it then i then i my kidneys were hurting and that's when i finally so you went think in you hurt your back because you had to do that one get up no yeah. he thought he got hurt his back because when i called him that morning <laughs> he said oh. he hurt his back in the shower and i was yeah. like did you slip and he's like no he was <laughs> what out were with, you i was hanging out with a, he had a friend, a friend in the friend shower, in the shower. <laughs> and he thought <laughs> his friend hurt him in the shower yeah yeah, because got it. And then so once I, I asked him, if, sorry, I don't want to cut you off. Yeah. The first thing I asked him was, OK, were you eating in the shower again? Is right. that what happened? He was like, no, you bend over. To I get wasn't the hot eating dog in the shower. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just I had thought I pulled a bunch of muscles because my calf and my thigh and everything hurt. And then it wasn't until middle that day when I started feeling the pain in my kidney. I was like, oh, my God, this feels just like when I had a kidney stone. Yeah. So I went in and that's what I said. I was like, I, th- I think I have a kidney stone. So they cat scan me and they're like, yeah, you got one in there. And you have traces right. of. of of uh, fecal matter on your body in after your they, urine after no, they swabbed no. you down. So have you your... passed that kidney stone yet? No, it's still it's still. So you're gonna have to endure that when that passes. Yeah, but you know I've done those before and it's a lot better than E. coli, so I'm not worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's this weird um, composition called H two O, and what it actually yeah. does, yeah. your body's made up of a lot of it. And if yeah. you I'm, drink water, it really helps yeah. your bodily function. And, I told and the doctor that. that I said, you know, this is I'm well versed in heat mm-hmm. stroke and 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 all the different heat mm-hmm. casualties that, that heat heat issues that you can have by not drinking water coming from you know being an instructor in florida but i just don't and i'm not trying to be mean i got i'll actually give you massive credit because i checked in on you once or twice a day because i was concerned obviously twice. you're one of my best friends and you actually 
weren't complaining whatsoever. You were just like, you're, I think your response every time was like, I'm going to need at least 24 more hours. Yeah. I'm like, you good? You're like, it's terrible. You just lay fine. on your back and stare at the ceiling. And that's pretty much all you can do. Did they prescribe you at least some pain medication? For yeah. That? Yeah. But I mean, you know, with with the way things are now, like you don't get anything. I mean, they give me Tylenol three. It's like you can't. Even though, you know, they give me two sets of morphine that second time I went in. It's like, yeah, Tylenol 3 I've compared to that. I've never been is, on morphine. Is it, did it help a lot? I'd imagine. I mean, it's, it's, it's quick. Like, you get relief for about 10, 15 minutes, and then the pain slowly hmm. starts coming It's only back. 10 minutes? Yeah. It's wow. Not, it's like, you, you're, once it goes in, your, your whole face heats up. And you should have scored you some fentanyl pops kind of fucking relax a little bit. And but then like, yeah, if you have really bad pain, yeah, 10, 15 minutes, it's that ramp starts to happen wow. like, where you slowly feel it come back. And then after about an hour, I mean, they'll give it if as long as you keep telling you're like, hey, this is getting uncomfortable again. They'll just come back and give you another one at once mm. an hour, pretty much, I guess. That I don't is know. an interesting thing. I feel that druggies have really ruined it for like normal well, citizens. That's the thing is Salt Lake City yeah. for me was terrible because I. Tore my LCL in the span of a year and then broke my foot and they prescribed me Tylenol. Yeah, pretty much. And I'm like, my foot is broken. And then when I tore my LCL, like I was, I mean, it's not the worst pain, but I mean, if you do any kind of like lateral movements, it's yeah. fucking brutal. And that was nothing. a conversation like, I had with Vicodin. the doctor and, and, like, the, I don't like, and the nurse. Yeah. And they were like, I was like, junkies have ruined this. They're like, yeah, like ERs won't prescribe, uh, like anything above Tylenol three now, like just unless you have a bone sticking out of your leg or something. Well, even then you're, you're still probably getting Tylenol three. Wow. Like people are so gun shy now of this opioid crisis, but which doesn't make sense to me because you have a, you have an online database. Now you can pull my medical record. I can walk in with my medical yeah, record. We were you talking can, about you this. can easily go through and go, okay, wait, you haven't been to a doctor or been prescribed pain medication mm -hmm. for four years. Okay, maybe you're not a junkie, and we can right. listen to what you're saying. But yeah, we were talking about this because I have my I have my neck issue that and you keeps can coming get back, shit. and I can't can see a doctor, can get anything prescribed. Like I I haven't been prescribed pain medication since I had my appendix out, which was you know four years ago. Like I'm not a fucking junkie, man. Like I can't move my head, so I'm kind of. Well, I even I, told, I need yeah, something. I told I told the the staff there. I was like, look, last time two years ago, I hurt my neck really bad. I, I I faced the same thing, right? And what I had to do is I had to go in the parking lot. I had to get on the phone with my medic friends and find stuff because you guys won't fucking do it. They're like, yeah, nothing we can do, man. It's like <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I hate taking any form of opioid, even Vicodin, but it's usually two days after. A but if you have injury, to, you're yeah. like, I need to sleep at least. Yeah, so yeah. I'm not like waking up with hot sweats at two in the morning and nearly passing out to go to the bathroom. It'd be nice to get at least four hours of sleep a night. But. Yeah, it's, it's weird. None of us are that. that I mean, I mean, not that that's surprising, but like we, we don't even know people, I guess. Well, I guess it's not the case. And I'm just looking at like opioids in general. I think those are relatively easy to hide from people as far as like opioid avoid uh, abuse because we've had a couple guys in the company over the last few years that are like pretty hard. I mean, I guess if you're looking, really if you're users, looking yeah. for the science, you but, can see. But, it, I do, but I don't even know the science, right? It's like I grew up. I mean, in it generally, li yeah, it makes you makes you numb and kind of a happier person. So you're not necessarily. You don't see a decrease in productivity. Oh, you don't really. Every time I take a Viking, I feel like I'm I know. just la la land, and I'm not a I, I'm not the active version of myself, and I hate it. That's why I refuse. Not to mention, I like a good glass of scotch every night, so I gotta gotta treat my kidneys pretty well, so yeah. I don't take that shit. I I like the caffeinated version of myself. Yeah, I like the caffeinated version of myself between. 6 a.m. and noon. We could argue 6 a, a bit and that noon. on both you sides. You like that version. I yeah, like, that. like that version. <laughs> that version. <laughs> That's yeah. my best self. You know how many times the caffeinated version of you told me to start building a railroad towards Oregon, and then you forgot? You told yeah, me to do that true. once I'm halfway there. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is the new greatest idea. Hey, it's yeah. almost built. What are you doing? I don't remember By the way, that. this escape goat is fucking amazing. The, the exclusive coffee, subscription coffee. Escape Which Goat is, is a is a favorite. 
this thing is amazing. The Yerg. This is the Yerg. This What's is, Atomic Orca? Because I know we digitally released what the tasting notes were, but I've been bouncing around, so I haven't even had it yet. What is it? It's a uh, Papua New Guinea, so it's a P and G. Yeah, the, I mean, I both once of those said I wanted to like, I've been drinking the Atomic Orca every day for probably the last week and a half since we released it. I don't get sick of it. I'm opening that today. It's yeah. really, it's Thanks. really That's fucking it. good, but. I, I I absolutely am. I'm a huge fan it of was, the Escape uh, Goat. It was it was. I think it was our best ECS that yeah. we put out. The yeah. I was exclusive a big fan of coffee Chainsaw. subscription. Chainsaw, Chainsaw was, was legit. A great roast, man. You were the ones that said yeah. that Papua New Guinea was not a good place to visit, right? I don't I know. I thought you told I me say that. a lot of things to you that aren't true. Yeah, but you've been there. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't right. been to PNG. You haven't? No. Oh, I mean, somebody I, we know I, has. They have. They have a bunch of different fairly interesting tribes they're still they're still hunter gatherers there they're one of the last significant population of diverse tribes that are still hunter gatherers i think it'd be an incredibly interesting place to to go sounds like a good place for fishing for coffee man it would be it would be an incredible place to visit i don't know if we could kill anything which i mean i would i if i go down to that area of the world the thing that i want to kill is and I don't know if we can legally. Ice is a saltwater croc. Oh man! Like I want to be. Actually, I want to go out could. and try to fucking hunt a saltwater croc. Those things grow to be so big, like twenty feet fucking yeah. long. Wait, let's talk about this, Evan. I mean, this is super See, super croc first right. world problems. But you and I have a hunt in May, supposedly, which is canceled. not going to happen. Canceled. Yeah. Is it officially canceled? Officially canceled. That is a sad day. It's We're a sad, go to not for sad me. day. Not for me because now you guys aren't going to Alaska. Oh, I, wanted I to get go. to hang out. Yeah. Oh, I was going to go. I was going to hang out at camp. Really? And talk to yeah. you guys on the radio. Yeah. 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 I'm not going to do no hiking. Yeah. Jared would get us killed. He'd key the mic. What are you guys doing? Right as a Kodiak's like 15 feet away. From oh, I I have no I have no desire to hunt a bear. Bears are terrifying. I I, I, I um, my I've been I thinking about this almost every day for at least the last six months. I've been visualizing it. Because it's a it's a four hundred grain arrow. It's it's fucking huge arrow. And Just a super heavy broadhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's big and it's heavy, and you got to put that thing within fifty yards, and you got to stuff it right into and you its fucking chest. Get a chest. good shot placement. So on that. every time I shoot my bow, every day, almost every shot, like I am visualizing a bear hitting a bear. And one of my favorite videos, actually, on YouTube, is Bear. So Fred Bear, the guy that started bear archery he has this old video on youtube of him shooting that is yes it is a gnarly video he's sub 30 yards on a polar bear with a traditional no a traditional bow traditional bow yeah Yeah. recurve and he thank you just as if he's taking out the trash just stands up over a block a block of snow boink Stuffs it right in the center, like center punches that thing in a heart, runs maybe 40, 50 yards, drops dead. I have it, it's an incredible video. If you guys yeah, haven't you seen it, it you've yeah. got to you've got to go to YouTube, just bear, polar bear, or not that that won't work, but Fred Bear, Polar Bear Hunt. YouTube that video. Just you can watch the whole thing. I think the whole thing's maybe 20, 20 minutes long. It happens. The action actually happens in the last two minutes. It's fucking insane. I, I, I mean, a polar bear to me is probably one of the most scary things yes, on the absolutely. planet. And to be thirty yards away from a polar bear with a traditional bow, just boink, whatever. Yeah. Well, hey, look at that! Yeah. You got a good. I mean, shot I've on seen him. a lot of bear attack footage, videos, <laughs> and of course you have photos. Yeah, yeah. But my friends of PJ up in Alaska and a, right. a good portion of their calls that they got to go out in the helicopters with are bear attacks how on many, remote how many polar bear attacks are there in the United States annually polar Logan's bear oh. polar bear no I just mean in general bear, bear attacks just do bear in Alaska bear and like attacks. did yeah, you guys would see that me, video yeah, of that guy who with the face ripped off yeah, by the yeah. face ripped off was, and he's talking he's and talking like you can see yeah. the meat of see his, his face eyeball oh. yeah wow yeah brutal yeah his son his son it, he was the, it was a father and a son yeah. and he had a he had a giant rifle you see what i mean this is why i'm not going after no bear it's probably the smart thing but you know we're, i just mean like my buddy sends me fo- like like a bear 
like like hits you in the head and your head comes off. I yeah. don't know if that's the case. It, that's your the pictures might, I got. I think like, your head would still be attached by some form of flesh. Of some ligament. Yeah. One. Yeah, yeah it's, it's hard to just knock somebody's head off. That bear one, knocked, a f- knocked a head off. I got so, the photos. Funny story. What I what I one of my dream dying propositions to myself is is if I were if I were diagnosed with some type of <laughs> terminal illness, I would spend the last few months with my family and then what I would prefer to do is just go into the back country, maybe kind of drenched in like animal uh urine. Uh, maybe like guts and things like that into Kodiak Island because just to be, just to have this experience of being eaten would be really interesting to me just to see what it's like to, to have this experience of like, following on this one. I mean, you have to, you have to think of it. You're not going to wake up in the morning and be like, Oh, that fucking sucked. You know, you're going to, you're going to go and you're going to be having this experience. Are you going to arm yourself? No, 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 no. Uh -uh. You just, if you're dead, you're dead, man. I mean, like you're talking. I just like, want the experience of knowing what it's like. You gotta imagine to to just confront something that large that's going to eat you. We agree that's the on last. A lot that's the last. That's the last that's experience going. you're gonna like, have. Here's how I see it playing out. Like you're you're squared up with this bear. His first swipe, like breaks your fucking collarbone and your whole you know, yeah, yeah one arm it's gonna now be, you're down it's gonna be like now he's gonna knock you down and he's gonna put his giant paw on the back of your head crushing you into the ground as he starts to just shred bite you. out of yeah. your back yeah like <laughs> yeah and then he's just gonna eat and you're gonna yeah. be laying there getting eaten the point of the process <laughs> One of the process, like you know, I would like to have some knife, you know, maybe I could give myself a fighting That's chance. What I'm saying. Give yourself like a, a Bowie knife or at least something that way, because then it, you know you're. Yeah, gonna but what die, happens but... if he's got a fucking broken neck and a clavicle and and, well, and he die knives now. the bear and now the thing that was going to kill him now he's just suffering. Well, I, mean, I think I think you go no. bears. I mean, they kill other bears all the time, so it'll it'll be absorbed back into yeah. nature and become but soil and food and all that jazz. On all the all contrary that. of this, if both of you were sporting giant bearskin jackets right. this winter, I would be insanely yes, jealous. Exactly, and you would. You be. know, I would disappear <laughs> exactly. for thirty days until exactly. I came back with my own bear. Exactly, that was our plan. <laughs> we were going to start wearing. Bear, bear jacket. Bear jacket. Yeah, but I mean, bear jacket. That is the coolest thing on the planet for a you bear to have jacket. a bear coat. Yes. Yeah. A so bear in, coat. in the last decade, there's been about 30. 30. 30 polar bear, bear attack. attack. No, not, not polar bear. 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 Oh. Attacks. Really? Or deaths. 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 So, yeah, okay, the attacks have to be significantly. Via. Because they bear. usually get bored. They just jack these dudes up like that dude we saw. He lived, but I mean. Oof. They put his face back together pretty well. Yeah, they I did. Impressed. Yeah, yeah. I did that last photo in that gallery. I did not expect that. I'm not like, there's no, no way. way this guy's still alive. There's yeah. no way. And then like, yeah, they stitched. But him that back just shows good. the the power of that little swipe. Like Brian Callen and I on Fighter and the Kid years and years ago went down that tangent, and it's an interesting thing to say. What would be the worst animal death? Right. So mm. like. Yeah. I look at like a large chimpanzee or a gorilla. Yeah, Ooh, gorillas so generally they're, don't they're fight mean. humans. Have you seen some of the, like Have you the, seen some of the chimpanzee attacks they've done? To the people? chimpanzees, yes, Ooh. but I've seen some footage of of foresters and tribesmen and stuff out in the in the in the jungle, and like a, a razor or silverback will come up and present, you know, where his land is. And you square up on them, and they'll kind of they'll they'll do their dance and like go around. But like as long as you're not going in their area, they don't fuck with you. This might be like a Natural Geographic episode. What's the strength comparatively to Homo sapiens and silverbacks? I feel like it's probably 15x strength. And then we're looking at not even imagine a gorilla on PEDs and deadlifting. Oh yeah. man, that's scary. That would be really cool. Yeah. I would love to see that. I mean, I would love to see that. It. Would be a pay per view. I think that's animal cruelty, but in the fantasy pay-per-view. universe that we're is creating it? in this podcast. I mean, is it? They live in jungles. Yeah. yeah. If you gave them an epic place to live, fed them full of steroids, great, <laughs> and then great and then, chow, and then they can they have the chance to kill and eat themselves a bear. Correct. A gorilla should have that chance. Yeah. And Give the, the gorilla is, a bow. Yeah, Wait, who's so to say they don't want to do that? Yeah. Four to eight times. Yep. Okay, I was a little above, but 
four. Who wins that? Silverback versus Grizzly. That's they, what I'm they saying. They did an episode on this. They had that old show where they would like pit animals against each other. And yeah, but I want to see this for real, you know. And I want like the actually animals. put them in a cage. That's the animals need to be on drugs. You could probably do that in Russia. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's probably a Russian maybe Africa connect. somewhere. Because I did I that like on a minuscule scope, like in Iraq, you had you know um, scorpion versus scorpion camel spider. Versus camel spider. Mm, Didn't yeah. know scorpion won almost every single time. Really? I I put the first time I put my bet on the camel spider. I was like, there's no way that thing's nasty. It hits up. It's yeah. Take it. The scorpion was smart. Had its claws out. Had the claws out. It's like yeah. Yeah. It's it's in there, and it it back up, and you put the cat in the back of the bathtub, and then the camel spider would jump at it and go. Right in the wow. head, It'd sting it right in the head, and the camel spider would go back and just die, and the scorpion would be like, with his little prongs up. Seriously, like this. yeah, that's super cool. I would love to see that. I mean, don't judge me for that, guys. We were in the middle of nowhere, sitting there. Why? Well, yeah, but in retrospect, who would, who would like, ever judge you for that? It's, you, you, it sounds awesome. If you it's think cool. about that to scale, though, that scorpion stinger to the camel spider is about as thick as that pole, just going into your head with poison. Yeah, and it was, and Oof. the accuracy of that stinger was hyper impressive. They were black scorpions, were they? Yeah, yeah, those are fucking gnarly. Yeah, those are that's, gnarly. That's part of the boo. Yeah, those, those are the those are bigger, right? Oh yeah, those are the yeah, big ones. Like they're, 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 yeah, yeah, Where did you get those? Five, six, Where'd you find them? They're all around the tents. Huh. We just put a cardboard box on them, save them until we find a camel spider, and then see what happens. Oh yeah, yeah, gotcha. Which I don't yeah. know about you guys right now, but that time in Texas with the rains and the heat coming back, my house is just covered in every single bug possible right now. Wasps, scorpions everywhere in my gym. I opened my fucking door the other day and one fell on my face. A yeah. scorpion? I was... Yeah, the little ones, but it landed and it just starts. And those things are not, dude, I looked at it and it started fucking running at me. And I'm like, I win this battle, but you're yeah, a brave chickens little take soul. Care of yeah, that. That's I was one taking a poo at your house last year and one and fell on my head. Yeah, out of the fan. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. yeah. Are they poisonous? Are they poisonous yeah. scorpions? I mean, that little scorpion ain't gonna kill you, but it, the the stingers hurt. Yeah, like to a my understanding too, like they're like uh, rattlesnakes, to where the the younger ones, the smaller ones, are more dangerous because they're not as good at controlling. I've their heard that that's poison. a wives' tale. Yeah, yeah, that's a good not question. It is a wives' tale. I've heard a lot of tales, and that's from a wives. sexist statement, by the way. Saying no, wives you could be a man and be a wife. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you 2020. Can. You can. It wasn't gender specific. It wasn't. I right. play by the rules. He's got okay. a point. No, that is. You're. You're actually. But yes, that's the. That is an upside to the chickens. Is they just demolish the bug population around. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, they the might house. give you yeah. E. coli once in a while, but they you know get what? rid of the yeah. scorpions. It was an experience. Have you seen your rattlesnakes at your property? I've been very nope. fortunate. Not one yet, because I worry I about my dogs. Seen, but... Haven't heard. I mean, yeah, I got mine. Re- the vaccine for it and yeah. we were talking about this yesterday we haven't seen one out at the ranch yet and i've walked most of that property and Me i too. haven't seen one yet. i rode the pro- the property this morning so yeah. i put 14 miles in out there on that rambo bike yes yeah. on the rambo bike which you were on a big wheel no i was on a bicycle oh, okay like a, a like bicycle. an actual bike like you were yes. exercising no it's it you, has it's, electricity. It's, it's electric and you know i mean it's like the it's, one that uh, Charlotte has. Yeah, I saw it. It, it was cool. It's, it's got them big super, tires. It's the same it's size, too, because cool. him and Charlotte ride the same size bicycle. Which, yeah, yeah. Yep, they, I uh, was wrong. The venom of, of a baby scorpion is not more dangerous. So. Uh, you rode 14 inc- miles. 14 miles, and the place is fucking crazy. It's crazy awesome is what it is. Oh, you go like, see some I, of the I spots? Haven't, I, haven't, haven't I haven't been the whole the whole way. Dude, so, I've been so happy out there lately. Like, I feel like a kid again. Like, I got the, all this land to go play on. So the There's this ponds turkeys that we were gobbling even, this morning. Yeah, fished, and they were they were they were up and at them this morning. But I didn't have a little scratcher, you know. Didn't have my gobbler. <laughs> didn't have that thing. So, is it still turkey season right now? Mm-hmm. My yeah. female is uh is hiding somewhere with a nest. I haven't been able to find her. Don't talk about your girlfriend. I don't care. No. <laughs> Talking about the female turkey. No. She's in the shower. She's got eggs. <laughs> She's got eggs nest. somewhere, but I can't <laughs> find her. Really? Yeah, they disappear when they lay Interesting fact. I was on a uh, Meat Eaters podcast, Steve Rinella's podcast. Yeah. And he started the conversation by talking about a, a previous guest and how the female turkeys will sit on their legs for extended periods or eggs for extended periods of time and they'll build up these massive shits and 
that they'll, warms the eggs? They'll leave the eggs and walk away from them because they don't want the 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 scat or shit or whatever yeah. they call it to bring in other predators. But they'll they'll blow out these massive deuces. Yes. Yeah, they're huge. And people will be cruising by going, oh, my God, what is that? Why is that so big? <laughs> well, that's one of the reasons because they'll hold their shit in for extended periods of time and then walk away and blast these big white <laughs> nasty turkey shit they're somewhere. big they're big they're about this good yeah way to open a podcast right yeah. what's that it's a good way to open a podcast it was they're, really interesting yeah. to me yeah. i mean the guy's pretty interesting either way that should but. be our new thing it's like where are you going i am a female turkey on some eggs right now <laughs> oh, oh, oh man oh man oh man i'm gonna need, I'm gonna need, gonna need two open. toilets for this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh man my i'll tell you what my daughter my six-year-old, she has been dropping the stinkiest dukes <laughs> on the planet. <laughs> like, it is, she's Dad been life. blowing me out of the fucking top of my house. Like, and she doesn't like to shit alone. So oh, I have no. to go in and hang out with her. <laughs> oh, no. It's, oh, no. Yeah, it's, I mean, this is like parenthood, right? So she brings her sister in. <sighs> Most of the time, it's her sister. So she brings in the... I'm the, happy when she's like 18 years old. She's going, you know, I'm going to go look at that podcast my dad used to have. Oh, my God, Dad. Oh, I don't care. She's too young to, under, you know, that'll be way in the future. And we'll yeah, be like, uh, yeah, these will be. But it's it's so funny because she'll bring my three year old in there and my three year old will just hang out in the bathroom while she's taking a shit. And so now they're shit buddies. They just oh. hang out with each other while they're either one of them is taking a shit. And of course, with the quarantine there, there's no school. So they're together all day long. But if her sister's not around, somebody else has to go in with the, oh. the six-year-old. So I got to go in there, and I'm, like, trying to figure out something to do, surfing the fucking web or whatever. And I, it was initiating my gag reflex. I was like, girl, you got to I, – I, I've got to start feeding you, like, some broccoli or something. I don't know what the hell's going on, but it's, it's impressive. <laughs> she stunk up the entire the top player of my house. Jeez. My wife and I were both – really super impressed we're we're like i'm not even mad i'm just impressed which is also um you are now down here with us you yeah. got a sweet little uh, trailer you pulled out and moved mm -hmm. the family up to our content ranch and are they yeah full, are they enjoying it you know it's hard not to enjoy it right mm -hmm. i was explaining this to my wife on the way down or before it's like i'd like to go down there you know one i mean we are Productivity, productivity goes up, right? Yeah, because um, we're isolated essentially with ourselves. We don't have to sitting, travel. We don't. Have that's a why we're schedule. not sitting here with masks yeah. because we only can come into contact with each other. So, um, it it just makes everything a lot easier, I think, for us to be able to continue to work, plan, execute. Yeah. Plus, we came up with a really fun competition that we're going to do yesterday. Yeah, I'm super amped about we that. We can talk about it. I think it's yeah, hilarious. yeah. We can talk yeah. about anything. Yeah, we were we were chatting about content ideas. Oh, he wasn't there. I don't think Logan was. No, because like I'm sure everybody's going through their own you know life changes in here, and and I think all of us are fairly blessed, and all of us our lifestyles preceding this were already very isolated because we just work and yeah. stay at home. Um, and I know a lot of people are going through some struggle, but. You know, there are challenges associated with this as far as a company and content creation and all these other things we have to do to sustain uh, the business and our employees and ensuring their employment. And uh, but it drastically changes the content, right? Because we can't mm -hmm. go do a production. Right. We can't bring on four people doing grips and, and all of this stuff because we don't know who or what they've been in contact with. And we have to obviously Gotta go back company. to our roots. Yeah. Go back to uh, onesies and twosies. But we're we're thinking about this idea. Logie, what do you think about this? where we all team up with one of us. So we need one more, maybe like Eli. We do uh, three teams of two or three two teams, teams of, two. of three. Okay. And we have someone that we don't know. Maybe it's Quarter Digital, Jack, someone write us a script, like a, a one to page two and page a half. script. And you're allotted points to go into this thing. And the points can be used to either use the black magic with a nice mic or an iPhone or creating two or three extra lines in that script. We all read the script just like Iron Chef in the beginning and says, this is what we can use in this. And it's up to us to take our own creative approach to that piece of content. And then it's a content off. 
and then we essentially Ooh, two yeah, people yeah, like me yeah. and Eli go out and film it. But you can't have extras, right? Because we're social distancing yeah, no, and quarantine. So like if there's three characters in there, one of you has to play all three or you guys each yeah, switch off this. the camera. This is great. And yeah, then yeah. we have the audience and FRA and Black Rifle Coffee vote for the winner of the competition. Yeah, yeah. And this is great for uh, behind the scenes with Calf Life, like how yes. we yeah. feel yeah. about doing this, right? And like I was trying to think about like we need some sort of competition going. Yeah. I was thinking like we've been doing all these personal branding initiatives, you know, I think I was thinking like maybe we could work that into a competition in some way, shape or form. But like, yeah, this is. It's super fun. How are we going to pick yeah. the teams? We're trying to sort through that yesterday. I got it. Okay, let's see. I, I, I got it. It has to be fully random. Yeah. Okay. It has right. to be fully yeah. random. Yeah. So we have to randomize it. Okay. And then that's how that's how we're actually picking the teams. So, so just throw it all in a hat. Yeah. It's. Do you do team SB. captains or are you just, just straight pull? Like, all right, Matt, it's Matt, and he's with mm -hmm. Jared. Just so we establish a packing order as to who pulls first, right? So who, you know, who who pulls out of the hat first and that could be anything from you know we could flip coins to establish you know who's pulling out of the hat first right you know it's just like one side the other side and then the last two right so it's just process of elimination and then then it's a full randomized like selection does that make sense yeah and yeah. you only have 48 hours to do this yeah it's got to yeah. be under a time crunch it's a time crunch yeah. and then you can't use any like resources like if you got eli you can't have him build like a vfx package that's pre-built no vfx allowed no vfx yeah. allowed i mean okay. sound design right. is fine editor because all of us can edit we can sort through it but it's completely up to you and your artistic approach so even that dialogue you could make it a horror film or you could make it a comedy it'll yeah. it, it'll take me 48 hours to edit a one minute video for sure <laughs> all 48 yeah. <laughs> yeah so i'll shoot for two minutes and then I'll edit for 48 hours. <laughs> but this is yeah, so much but fun. But you'll be fine because you're the only one that like doesn't edit all the time. Uh, so yeah, I don't. I mean, yeah, everybody I, else. I, I don't edit. You're, it, uh, whoever's your edit teammate anything. will be the editor. Who Who? what? Whoever's your teammate will, will be the edit. You know, the. Yeah, I mean. But then you might have someone that's like you get Dave. He can edit and film, but he's obviously not going to be an on-screen talent. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, no offense, Dave. Okay. No, <laughs> he, said I'm, he said I'm spot on. I want Dave to be my partner because I mean, I'll just spend the entire, the entire. If time you want Dave to be your partner, then me and Logan will be partners, and he can have Eli, and we can make this a legit competition. It's no, not. Then I win. I win that. 10 no, out of it's 10. not because you mm. because this is this is I win that this 10 is out of ten audience ba This is audience vote. Yeah. I'll still win 10 out of 10 on that one. No, 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 no. Because there's a lot of motivation I, to. I uh, just, I think Evan's partner should be Richard. Mm. That's actually, that is. I didn't think yeah. about Richard. That is a, there you go. He's a shooter and That's, an editor. It doesn't surprise me. You didn't. Think and you can Richard. use your points to get the slow-mo <laughs> camera. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> he knows he? how to edit. He knows how to shoot. So there's, yeah, it's yeah, Eli. He, he can act. Eli do, Logan, are Richard. we, do we know that for sure? <laughs> Historically based, you know. Do we know that for sure? <laughs> Have you sat over his shoulder and looked at him actually edit something? I've okay. seen him with editing equipment on his desk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a I've color seen wheel. him at his desk a lot. And, <laughs> and a color wheel. Actual work product is debatable. <laughs> we should make the Instructor Earl country song. So just kind of how the Tiger King had it. We should do one for you for Instructor Earl. So here, oh, so yeah. here's super. Here's yeah. something super funny about the Tiger King. So before I watched the Netflix special, yeah, I was seeing all the memes. I, I, I was getting the just there's something interesting going on out there for sure. There was a new fad, y yeah. yeah. But I saw the video. Somebody had posted a link to the video on some platform, the music video whatever first. it was. One of the yeah. one of the music videos. I thought that was a joke parody. video. I thought yeah. it was a parody right. video. And I was like, this is amazing. This is hilarious. Whoever made this is, ha has to be an incredible comedian watching the tiger King realize. and realizing that it wasn't. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like this is incredible. <laughs> Dakota and I jumped into that a little bit. Oh, on you did? Episode. No, I just, but like how just ridiculous that whole thing is. And well planned. I think they're actually doing, another episode they They're, are they They're are they're doing another episode yeah. yeah it hasn't yet 
It's like a car crash. Like you don't want to look at it and you feel bad for everybody, but you still have to. It, watch. It's, a, it's, it's a modern day freak show. Yeah. That's what yeah, it, is. it is. And there's no protagonist in this. Like everybody to me, like watching, like everybody's guilty. Everybody's insane. Yeah. And Carol they're Baskin, crazy, dude. Carol Baskin. <laughs> they're oh. crazy. These people are crazy. I, I don't know. What, what do you guys think of the ethics involved in keeping a a large animal like that what do you what what are your thoughts on this it's insane to me that it it made it that far to where somebody could do that 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 the government hasn't stepped in and regulated like it's wild to me well it's wild no it I have mixed feelings about it, and I don't know if I'm right or speaking out of my ass. But if you look back, it's a good social study, to be honest with you, because if you look at the actual Tiger King, when he started, and they show some of it at the end of the series, he started out as a rescue, and he was right. massively and intently against capturing and, and sanctuarizing or whatever that word is to, of, of exotic animals. Mm-hmm. But as he, his fame started to grow because of them, it turned into this freak show. And I think that there is some um, legitimacy to saving these animals and then breeding them and then getting them back in the wild to ensure population and and, um, protection of a fairly almost extinct species. Because I think there's more in captivity than there are in the wild. There are a lot. But what they're 5,000 plus in the United States alone. Right. But then the efficacy of capturing them and killing them and petting and all these things that are used for human pleasure rather than the well being of animals, you know. It's a hard point because I think there's there's argument points there as far as like hunting when people are like, oh, these animals on, on high fences and all that. And I'm like, well, OK, but they live this awesome life without any predators. They have, you know, vets that are giving them shots and they're not going to die of some bacterial infection. It's pretty mm-hmm. rad. And then one day they just go away. Um, but I'm probably more against it than I am for it because people are inherently pieces of shit sometimes. And yeah, I think it gets used to a means of self-benefiting to where it's it's not the it's not what is meant to happen in the wild and that's the issue i have with it yeah. there's there's 3900 wild tigers in the world like that's crazy yeah there's like 5000 in the united states yeah. Right? yeah 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 well and that's like my takeaway in that was like that carol baskin bitch i mean she is promoting herself i don't even know why we're on this tangent but as a <laughs> as a rescue person and she's not. She's operating a for-profit zoo and showing these animals off and calling it like she is the world's biggest hypocrite. And then she's in, in the problems I see with that is the outreach and support she's getting from people to help the her with this rescue and the donations. It's like, where is that money going? She's just fucking loading her pockets and then you, portraying that she's trying to save animals. Yeah. But she is no, she's no better fraud. than yeah. any of the other people that Running are housing Running an entirely animals. volunteer workforce. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That she coerces them with fake rank, you know, by their T-shirts and everything like that. Like, she is no different than Joe. She's no different than the doctor. She has her same fucking sideshow off the freeway. She killed her husband. Cat fucking deal. Probably. Yeah. Those photos, like when they did their wedding photos and she's got her husband on a leash. Did you see that? Did you make it that far? Some like, weird shit. What? I watched the whole thing. Yeah, I, I binge watched on Sunday. I watched like nine. Yeah, of them but that in was row, the new husband. Were. Yeah. Um. Anyway, like <laughs> seeing the daughters and the and the mother talk. That's what that's what was super fucked up. Like the her oh, original right. husband's daughters and the yeah. mother. Like, dude, we we got nothing. Like this fucking crazy bitch took it all. And like, yeah, but I. I I don't know that that yeah. happens all the time. Yeah, it does. yeah. It's, and then it, you like, know, husband moves on, remarries, you know, for whatever reason. Like this, this is yeah. like everyday yeah. life for people in the United States. Moves on, and I'm not saying that he did or didn't. I'm saying he disappears. You know, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of assholes in the world, right? There's a lot of assholes. There's a lot of guys that don't like their wives and they don't like their families. So they would just yeah, tell them to fuck off. I mean, that's the reality of it, right? They're like, every guy is not a good dude that wants to see the best by their family. Yeah. So who the fuck knows who this guy was? If he was a good person, a bad person, I don't know you, who, who cares at the end mm-hmm. of the day. It's like, who cares? I, I was, I was watching it. The most interesting thing to me, was the the doctor in mysticism? 
Yeah, that like guy. That. He kept going doctor, and it's in mysticism. The, I was like, is, is that amazing. Real that guy, yeah. that guy has it figured out. He, what the fuck? Like that guy. He has his own is, sanctuary. He has his. He has. He lives on essentially a, a, a private resort. Yeah. With multiple wives. That he all made them legally change their name to what he named them. Well, technically, he, aren't they girlfriends? They're not wives. G- right. Who knows? But semantics. Right? He's essentially running a cult. Yeah. So, what I want to know is, how do you do that? <laughs> that that's... <laughs> <laughs> how do you do how, that? That guy has a huge W in the block of life. That's yeah, what I, that's I, the thing. When it's I like, look at that guy, I'm like, like what the fuck? When wind, your significant other yeah. is complaining to you, you're like, look, there, there are women out there that have nine sister wives that live on a tiger resort. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, is this really that bad? This dude has convinced people he is a doctor of mysticism. Mysticism. Which is fictional well, as his, far as I can tell. His nickname, his nickname means the word God, doesn't it? Or yeah, friend of God. He is clearly an L. Ron Hubbard type personality. <laughs> clearly. I mean, these he shows up on an elephant to talk to people. Yeah, these personalities remind yeah. me of... Uh, what the personality Larbers? must be for no oh. for for dictators a successful oh, yeah. dictator or cult leader they have commonalities so when you look at each one of these personalities in the tiger king we're really looking at the same kind of personality as a cult leader a dictator because even when you looked at the 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 tiger king joe himself we looked at his little zoo he ran it almost like a little country dictator country what i found more interesting than anything in that was all the fringe jackets that he had because he had a wide variety of, of them of, they were all jackets, hanging in this yeah. roughly this similar place and they were all roughly this similar cut there's no need for any one person to have that many similar fringe jackets <laughs> i mean <laughs> did, you, did you like the fact that when his staff member got her arm bitten off that he ran and he put, put his, his yeah. EMS, EMS jacket on. EMS jacket. Yeah. He's like, awesome. This is, <laughs> he's I will never financially recover from this. <laughs> this is what happens when we've uh, not been around people too long is we're doing an FRA on the Tiger King right now. I think hey, this is okay. incredibly interesting. I mean, everybody everybody, pretty much to this point has seen it. We're breaking it down. I, you know, well, Doctor of Mysticism obviously has the big W. So I'm like, curious. What's your guys' opinion on this? I felt the one girl that escaped his clutches was the hottest one. The one that was that that had only spent seven years there, <laughs> only seven years. Yeah, didn't you, you better see? part of a decade? I don't get the fascination <laughs> with tigers. With tigers. Like, I don't either, with, especially don't the baby either. tigers. Because like you talk to some of those people in the interviews, yeah. you listen to them, they're like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> who, it's a tiger. who wouldn't want to be around tigers all day? Yeah. And I'm like, me, I, me, I don't me? like if someone brought a live. T- I'd be like, cool, okay, cool. that's cool. Like, are you gonna treat that thing? Can okay? you get it out of here now? Yeah, like, I I just don't understand. Well, how, I th- I think it's. Partly due to the fact that a lot of people live very boring lives. And when you see that, you see the color pattern, like it's exotic. Like people like they can't control it. Right. It's like something you've never seen before mm. and it's there in front of you and you're you're overwhelmed with the this obsession joy of with this that picture mystical though. creature. Like hmm. so many people just want that photo of them with a tiger. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's super bizarre to me. I mean, yeah. even the in the show, the reporter that's doing a story on everything that's going on from a conservation perspective with laws getting passed or trying to get passed, like the reporter is like supposed to be there to like expose what's going on and she sees the tiger and she can't control herself. Right. Like she's overcome with joy by this cute, cuddly little cat. I did think it was pretty fucked up when they were like putting them in suitcases and like walking up to Vegas yeah. hotel oh, rooms. Old, I'm like, uh, bro. You what need was to get that guy's your head name? Smacked real hard. Yeah, uh, the guy that took Jeff. over, Jeff. Like he's shysty too, man. Oh God, yeah. I don't know. I I've met plenty of people that look like him that are really squared away. <laughs> 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 plenty of guys that wear bandanas, jeans, bandanas under a baseball hat yes. in their in their lower fifties, right? Yeah. That are very plenty. trustworthy individuals. That person screams. Trust I'm going to trust you. Yeah. I, I, I'm just going to trust you, you know, like, for sure. I can give him my routing number. I feel like you guys are 
judging someone on their appearance, okay? It's the content of the book, not the cover, okay, guys? Okay. All, All right. right. That's I'll, I'll give you that. Well, this. what hey, was the content I think of you're Jeff? you're very accurate in your, <laughs> <laughs> your statements. <laughs> I'm probably not going to like that. Yep, sure don't. Yep, okay. sure that don't. I, I do have a question, though, because I – which it sounds like I'm patting myself on the back, but it's be a largely based on the really horrible internet connection at the ranch. I haven't seen a lot of really good binge worthy TV on this quarantine that we've been on, but I've heard, so I've heard two things, which is tiger King. And the other one is, um, the other Netflix. It's about, uh, the, God, I'm, Come on. I'm binging Ozarks right that's now. That's what it is. Ozarks that's what I was. That's really what I was. Good. Okay. So I don't like Ozark. Who has seen Ozark? Is it Ozarks or Ozark? Oh, it's called Ozark. It takes place in the the lake the of the Ozarks. Got it. In, I watched. So first... you're watching that right now. Yeah. Have you seen this? No. Uh, my wife watches the Ozark, which is crazy because normally we're all so definitive on our stance of saying that we don't watch TV shows because I never watch them. But now on like the weekends, I I can't go do fun shit really. Yeah. So I'm like, I guess I've been watching a. Call Saul. Oh, Better Call pre- Saul. Yeah, better Call Saul. That's yeah, really pre- good. Pre- it's been I really it. good. And it's weird because they talk about like lawyer shit and legislation and mm-hmm. all that. And it's actually super fascinating to me. And if you haven't watched it, both of you guys, I would because the director of photography on that, of how they set camera placement, and they allude to something going to happen solely based on the camera angle yeah. and cinematics and the, and the sound design. And then it throws you off. Like, because that's, that's a hard part for me with a lot of those shows. I guess what's going to happen. I'm like, oh, that, that fucking dude's going to die right here. And then I'm, I've been wrong 99% of the time in Better Call Saul. So yeah. I'm like, and that's I'm, what I'm they did really well in Breaking Bad, well, too. Is they would, same guys, right? Yeah, same guys. Yeah, yeah. I, I believe so. I don't know if the director of photography is the oh, same okay. or not. But they always place cameras in places that you would never expect them. And it's almost like where the camera is. It's almost like it, its own character. It goes the against show. a lot of like principal photography in the sense of, Hey, if you have a close up, you need to get emotion based, you know, uh, singles and all of this, but they'll have a whole conversation from like a fake, you know, uh, camera up on the ceiling during an interview. And it's just a wide for like uh, 30 so, seconds. Yeah. And I watched the first though. season of Ozark and I stopped because to me, Ozark was breaking bad. Just, Put in a midwestern setting. Oh, and you yeah, that's right. You, I, you explained. I, I just that wasn't. To me. It was just. It's the same. It's the same general arc of problems mm-hmm. of okay now now you've made a, a high cartel leader mad and they're after you and your mm-hmm. family okay now you fix that problem but now you have the fbi yeah, up yeah you. i can and see i'm just that. i'm not like that stuff isn't entertaining to me yeah anymore. you're not you're not wrong now there. i like breaking bad so much like I, I feel like i'm just getting another breaking Bad. yeah and that's what yeah. that's, that's what i did it's still I just didn't good want for the, me to to watch this s- character develop something that was super super interesting uh, is a documentary recently came out and I'd have to look up what the exact name is. I think it's called the beginning or something like that, but it's about, um, the, uh, the making of the first alien movie. Oh, and, cool. and like the battle of, of it being one of its kind at the time of, because, uh, essentially was that, cause that, that would have been the first one was that black and white where the, the, the spaceship crashed into the moon. That was the first alien. The movie, beast within. No, it's not the beast. Were you being within. satirical? Yeah. No. What are you talking about? No, Alien. Like Alien One, like nineteen eighty three. Um. Prior to that, you had, um, uh, Dune, had had recently come out, and that was a very sci fi ish space type super sci fi you had yeah. you and then um, and the greatest movie of all time tremors mm-hmm. that that's like 90s i just wanted to say that um, I, no i, I watched that so i'm, I'm with you on, on this one like so, i love alien and like think about that so movie bad, came out good. in 1979 yes 1979 where the special effects were in yeah. that film like it was way so Ridley this Scott documentary way is ahead who? Of fucking super Dune? cool no no no, no, no alien. alien the first oh, it was 1979 and that was the first. So, so before, the the one movie prior that prior to that was the what is what is the alien movie with the mountain? The guy makes the fucking clay mountain, and it's all about the mountain. Star Wars. No, <laughs> uh, blah 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 of the third kind or something like that. Oh, Close Encounters. Yeah, of the third kind. Yeah, right. That was right. So, so up to this point, like aliens in cinema had only been portrayed like these 
you know, Close Encounters was kind of the most popular movie mm. that had an alien in it. And the writer of, of Alien was obsessed with this Swedish artist that made these the the most terrifying fucking artwork that you're just like what the fuck of like fucked up humans and like like xenomorphs like when you look at his artwork from the 70s they are the original xenomorphs of and and the writer was so adamant about this is the guy designing our monster and he he fought a bunch and there was a lot of mess with that movie but what that led to is after watching that documentary Going back and what I did is I watched the entire Alien series in order of which it takes place in time. So the first one, the first movie that you watch Prometheus, that right? is Prometheus, and yeah. that takes place in the year 2090. And then in 2111 uh, is Alien Covenant. And then 30 years after 2111 is when Alien 1 starts and yeah. then you go Interesting. The and so it's really cool because when you go back though they have all those all the same people have been making all of these these I mean there's 5 right? 6 so when you watch Alien Covenant which is the most n newest one that was done in 2017 it's showing things that that happen in alien later in mm. time in the universe interesting so it's super cool yeah yeah and the the latest ones that he did prometheus and alien covenant like those weren't heralded like they didn't get good reviews like people did not like those movies and like it's because of the fact that like he's providing a new answer to evolution and people don't want to hear it they don't want to see it portrayed yeah. in film. well it's super mm. cool i've like, never seen any of those but well, it's the concept is the like what can is a bioweapon yeah what like, can that artificial intelligence do oh, okay. with evolution Got so it. there's this artificial thing that a human creates and then through artificial intelligence it mm. figures out evolution and it starts playing with things and it makes these other species. So wow, that's yes, cool. the quick gist of it. You know this is why are you, are this is why this, this is really interesting. Huh. Is like Prometheus, the very first one, when we we get this signal from what we've dubbed these guys called the engineers. They're they're human like, but they're a lot bigger than us. Well, we go to this planet that we were getting this this radar signal from. When we get there, there's only these like two which look like fucking ammo silos and you mm. go in and yeah. this was this entire planet is a bio was, was was a was a holding facility for this bioweapon that they created the face huggers mm. they they come from eggs they attach to your face they lay the xenomorph mm -hmm. eggs in your stomach and it just multiplies and takes you completely out it's a weapon that's so cool. so yes once you get into like the whole real string of these stories you realize that these the alien the xenomorphs were all just a biological weapon from the the engineers i go yeah. the slower route i don't watch or smarter route. i don't watch all the films but if you go like the youtube breakdowns there's a whole ones mm. of the alien series and it's like a 15 minute video and it walks you through everything who the engineers were the xenomorphs and all that and that's cool if, like it's for super film, interesting yeah, I've been focusing on that a lot at night now. I was just like going through YouTube channels and like breakdowns. Like if you guys haven't seen 1917, I fucking love that yeah. film. And there's a lot more cuts than I could catch watching it. But if you watch how they did it. You know where of, the cuts are, though. You it, can guess yeah. a few, but some of them you would never know that it was a cut. Um, but they do like kind of the camera work and the gimbal work on that stuff. And it's so interesting to see they'll have a dude running with a handheld that throws it onto a car, which you can't even see the camera shake because they put the the OTS of the crew working and then the actual film shot. And then as the car's driving, it goes back to handheld and the guy's running with it. And then he throws it on a crane and the crane does the exit shot. And you're just oh, like, that's awesome. It's super cool to see how they're working it. And some of the shots, like you would think that were on like a professional track that were on this long ass, like um, slide glide cam. And all it was, was two freaking like PAs pushing a dude in this shitty little cart on this like Hollywood movie, you mm. know? And, in 1917, the budget wasn't that high for what they got away with. What is with. 1917? It is a World War I, one flick mm -hmm. about uh, Just came a out British recently. soldier who needs to communicate to this other what, some of his troops that they're going to be ambushed and the right. assault that they're going to do. The, 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 I believe the it's Germans, a trap. It's a trap. Yeah, and so, so, but everything is shot 
in a one shot. Continuous. Viewer, oh, wow. viewer so it's like bird. There's no like signals yeah, yeah, yeah. and all that. Yeah. yeah it's, it's mm-hmm. insane to see. And they pull off a lot of emotion. And I think they did nine months of previs and blocking on it. So you meaning his like journey they when it starts like he travels over the course of this hour and a half of this movie. You see the distance that this guy has to travel to get this message to. That's and, cool, and you feel you feel the distance. Oh, you were so you were so stressed out Watch the entire yeah. thing. Yeah, I because it is it's, it's a phenomenal. different style of movie. That's like, what I wanted to get out of this, which is like I needed some nineteen seventeen. I needed it. some some recommendations because I, I I would I would really enjoy. I'm reading Jack's book, obviously Jack Carr's new book that just came out. Uh, but I, I need something. Yeah, else. that so like Narcos was the last thing that I wa- that I watched. I didn't. I couldn't get into Narcos. I got into it, man. Great, great series all the way around. I, I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. Well, Nineteen Seventeen was done by uh, Sam Mendes, who did the last few Bond films. Yeah, and I don't know if you guys have been staying up to date on the Bond movies. Yeah. I love all the new Bond films. Like, really, they're if you need, you know, you get super deep in that binge. Rewatch the like from I can't get super deep. The well, three so and the, the six year old keep me from the <laughs> yeah. uh, any the documentary is called Memory. Memory. Yes, I recommend it because when you go through what documentary you, is that? this is the one on Alien. Okay, mm-hmm. like just to see though, is it about the film crew? It's yes, it's about the oh, whole production. I'm watching. It's that. about That's it's great. about all the problems that they face, the funding, the movie getting passed off from one production company to Fox, and then having uh, was it Stanley Kubik? Do you, who's the who's the director? Ridley Scott. Yeah, Ridley Scott. Yeah. Like like Ridley Scott stumbling onto this script and then being like, "Oh, I want to do this." Like again, this movie, this script when you when you originally read the first Alien, like if they had to do that movie for a million, 2 million dollars, it never would have been what it is. Really? And then yeah, them stumbling onto uh what was Sigourney the Sigourney Weaver. I think they did it for 20, 22 million. Mm. But yeah, it was 1979. There was no like they yeah. were having to build practical effects for everything. Yeah, and I think I, my takeaway in watching all that stuff because I watched some behind the scenes of Alien. But uh, first one was like 1917. Remember when we were shooting sci-fi? How we kept trying to go for those longer gimbal shots mm-hmm. and get everybody in the tracking to make right. it feel like one sequential thing. Mm-hmm. That was because I'd watched 1917 with the Eli, and we're like, "Fuck it, why shoot you know singles right. and just piece this thing together? Let's make it more." cinematic and pull with it and get those right. longer shots because it just feels so much cooler and on alien i know that uh when the alien pops out of the stomach they didn't tell any of the actors about that yep they said shit's gonna go down act yeah. and that's why they got so fucking terrified because they were like what's wrong with and bah! the fucking <laughs> whatever the, the practical yeah. vfx and that thing comes out and they were so like holy real. shit because they had no clue it was right. gonna shoot out of its stomach yeah that one and um the thing in yeah. 1981, yeah. as far as practical so they so they go. talk about that in, in memory, and it's really yeah, dude. Memory, memory does a really good job of piecing all all those people that are huge names now that that were a part of these little projects back then that were like okay, Hollywood wasn't doing movies like this at all then, and you know that what's that's what sparked Terminator and 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 all these other things. But another another really interesting thing in the movie world is I went back recently and watched, did you ever know the, uh, hear of the IMAX movie called fighter pilot? No. Mm-mm. So that came yeah. out in 2006 and it was kind of the first time it was, it was an IMAX production. It was the first time like that we had filmed uh, red flag and fighter and like fighter aircraft doing things with right. that level of a camp camera equipment and stuff like that. Well, even that now, like I went back and watched it the other day, it's so dated. So for us, when we get Top Gun 2, this is going to be the coolest like experience with these fighter aircraft that we've ever had because Top Gun is filming with 8K Reds, six of them in an array inside a cockpit. Nothing has been captured so like this. So excited for this and movie. That's what I mean. Like, we've never captured a dogfight on 8K Reds, like, in right. slow-mo. And it's like, we're going to see this now 
in one of the most high dollar budgeted films that in, in our generation of like holy shit like this is going to be really cool well film's getting so insane i think i think even as a content creator today like we get so spoiled with how easy things are like as far as vfx plugins and the cameras that we have i mean like the black magic cinematic pro like if they had that in the 80s it would have been revolutionary mm -hmm. oh my god and it's it's interesting to see what they had to do with practical like even star wars if you watch making of those were all models that they built on a micro yeah. scale well, and shot with like computer tracking to get it all done george lucas had to invent industrial yeah, light to, and magic they had to make it like it didn't <laughs> exist and now it's like oh we'll just do that in post you know and like we're fucking spoiled but, yeah but. the thing with top gun you know they they did t and e and invented this six array camera rig that mounted to the front of a cockpit like so it's it's like we're gonna see footage are they gonna do another volleyball scene yeah, of course. I believe they so. Right? In the I think they're yeah. just gonna do a, a football. I think it's a football beach scene. Like like a soccer? No. As, as long Cruise as they're shirtless dudes, again, Jared's right? gonna be yeah. cool with it. Yeah, there, there'll be plenty of shirtless. Yeah, dudes. Tom Cruise is in this one. Here's but, is well, Goose in here's, this again? here's what I don't Goose know is, is Rooster. Son Rooster, is Rooster son. who who I I spoke to Miles two days ago. Uh, who? he wants Miles Teller, he plays Rooster, Goose's kid. Right. He wanted coffee. Um Oh, I forgot. <laughs> but he's yeah, so Miles who? Teller plays Bruce Rooster. Willis's is son. Goose's son. <laughs> Got it. Bruce Willis was never in the Top Gun franchise. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you guys watch that documentary? Um I wanna say it was uh They Shall Not Grow Old where they restored. I that was World on War the pre order I. list for almost six months before that came out. Did it was incredible. Yeah. And they released it, so they they released that to iTunes first, but they only did live showings for I I think it was several months before they released it on iTunes. So I had registered for that while they were still doing the the live viewings, but it's it's an incredible. So they took they a shall bunch not of grow old, yes, uh, yeah. yeah. So they re they they colored a bunch of World War Two or sorry World War One footage. So you get this entirely different look into what it was like for a World War I soldier. And then they, they, they went from start to finish with the, the history of World War I. They talked about it, and they had you know sound and who was that? Peter? Peter um, Jackson. Same Peter Jackson did, the, did it. Uh, Tolkien, Lord it's of the amazing. Rings films. It's wow. amazing. Um, that sounds insane. Yeah, it, it, it's really... It, it's really well done. I want to know really how long that. it took them to do that because restoring footage from 1914 to 1918 like that can't be an easy process Dave's yelling at us what are you, what are you trying to say you give us a time how many one hour We're wow at one hour one hour there, there are plugins though I've seen now, which I, I doubt that they use there's maybe a little bit. Two right there for, <laughs> for, for <laughs> yeah. There's like HD you, you can map and it coloring. And it will, yeah. It'll go through that whole scene and colorize exactly what it does. I'd be curious to know how exactly they did that. That'd be rad. Yeah. They've also yeah. I saw yesterday there was a a new ad out for a new piece of software that is a new AI that can take standard definition footage and make it HD. Really? Oh really? Yeah through a algorithm and pixels adding pixels and things like that dude these new computers are doing so much crazy shit remember like frame blend when that came out yeah or optic flow and how optic cool flow that when it first came out and it was so expensive yeah and quarter was showing me the new stuff and i'm like you can't even tell it's because it, what it does is like if you shoot in like 23.9 or 24 frames per second like standard mm -hmm. what we shoot um, for standard footage, like not slow-mo, right. you have skipping frames when you try to slow it down, mm -hmm. right? Because you're going to see them move. You'll just see the frames, right. but it actually creates frames in between oh, them that's cool. to build yeah. kind of that segue. That's super cool. And that way, when you slow it down, you can actually slow right. down 24 frames to 60 frames, and it looks pretty freaking smooth. Wow. Um, yeah, the technology is just getting it's insane. It's getting wild. Especially with deep fake now and all that stuff. Like, the world's going to be a weird place in 10 years when you cannot tell if something's real yeah. or fake. I'm kind of looking forward to just being able to fall off the grid somewhere so I don't see things go so weird. Well, what, you know what I'm I mean? Fair. really looking forward to in the future, and, you know, this isn't far-fetched at all. I mean, some of it exists now. Like, 
I'm super excited for VR to advance. Let's not but, talk about your sex. But stuff. also, but, well, no, no, no. I'm talking about yeah. like oh. I want to go perform. You know, a, a Pearl Harbor mission. Oh, got you know, sorry. like, like, like. In I, a fighter yeah, I, I, I know, I know what you're saying. Like, right? so you like, want to fly in a Japanese Zero? No, is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, I don't want to fly in a Japanese Zero. <laughs> I, I don't know why. You, why do I you want to take bomb off from Pearl Harbor? Shore. That's yeah, super I want weird. Dog fight. <laughs> I want to get into these missions. I want to do the Battle of Midway, like in VR, in a plane, like with real communications like right. this is going to be this is going to be legit you 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 you're absolutely right like it's going to get to a point it's where so you'll cool. be able to embed yourself into midway be on a, any you know, role that yeah, you want you're right. like whether you're you're right. you're, you're manning right. an anti-aircraft gun or something like and and what kind of got me on this kick recently is it was corridor had uh, or you know the corridor guys with node they were all playing this civil war game this new civil war game that's out and it's wild because is it there's VR? hundreds of people i don't know if they had vr on right. but it's a computer game but it's hundreds of players you know stacked in certain That's battles crazy. of history like it was Gettysburg I was watching right, them yeah. play Gettysburg and they're the Union Army and they're they're all massing because there's like right. 60 some odd players in there and it's like they have one commander that is telling everybody over discord what to do and it's like line up f volley now assault like fix bayonets go for it. like and it was just like I got so sucked into it I'm like holy fuck we're gonna be able to experience this stuff digitally well, it's, As a wild, this I think it's a wild world going forward because I think I, I'm curious to see like production houses and movies because the whole dynamic of everything is going to change because a lot of this is going to be live action. I mean, you know, I just started twitching and if you look like streaming and if you look at some of the followership on these guys that just play video games and how immersed their audiences are, it's insane. And then kind of the what they do to communicate with the people watching and the teams, it's it is a very weird world. I mean, I had that little thing where I press now. It sounds like I'm on the radio, and then I just yell at people like I'm on the <laughs> commander on the radio. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah, like, we're not that far. Ender's I game. sent you that um, that aircraft simulation rig where it's completely suspended. So, like when you're flying around, this thing is spinning, it's you, spinning, and you're doing. You got complete you can put that in your six, home. Yeah, this yeah. guy's got it in his house. That I mean, it's big. Crazy. It takes up this whole corner. Yeah, but so it's like it's on a frame, and you can. Something. But you can free spin wow. when you roll, and right. But I mean, you know, the government is just looking at this like, well, we'll just wait till that technology gets to a certain point, and we can just have instead of drone pilots, like we have pilots. Yeah, I had a long conversation with old Biff yesterday about uh, the next generation fighter aircraft. Yeah, like is, we're not we're not that far be, away from it's like going. Ender's well, game. yeah. So there's a there's a couple programs out there like the. Um, they're developing Pop called sex? the the like uh, I mean, these are all open source. Okay. Boeing's working on it, but like the um, the ultimate wingman or something like that. It's like it it is a drone that lives on the aircraft that has weapons on it, and wow. you go into a place you know where there's an offensive counter air threat, and this thing fucking pops off and just hangs out right behind you. And if anybody f rolls in, this thing takes off after it. Shut up. <laughs> I like that they got real creative with that name, too. Wingman. It's punny. Well, and, like, not to draw this weird fucking parallel, but you look at standard human, like, our capabilities and, you know, our mind to fingers and how we control things in, like, video games. And you have some of the best in the world. But the best in the world will get smoked in two seconds by a hacker. What's hacking? AI. So then you apply that to uh, the, the like, military complex and think about how drones can be in the future as long as, uh, you know, the, the planes fly. Like, AI is going to outdo humans right. well, no, I mean, that's time. That like, was we what just we were can't, talking about. We don't about. think that fast. We were talking about last night. Your biggest limitation inside a uh, fifth-generation, sixth-generation fighter now is the pilot. Aircraft can pull up to 11.5 Gs unclassified. Like, humans can only withstand 9 Gs before they pass out. Yeah. So it's like, okay, well now, you know, and that's what we were, we were just going off on this tangent of brainstorming. It's like, what if a miniature offensive fighter had a swivel point in it to where it can be going forward at 200 knots and flip its body and start heading the other direction if it has to. And it's like a human can't withstand that type of force. But if there's no human in there, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, <laughs> that's coming. 
Oh, yeah. oh it's yeah. coming. Soon, it's probably already here, to be honest with you. Yeah, if you, you nobody would, would trust Biff with like real secrets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, actually, I mean, he's he's a fucking awesome guy. Well, he's that okay. Would. So that posed me another question that I was talking to you last night that I think is a a super kind of odd miss, both for the D, like kind of for the DOD is. You have Top Gun 2 that's slated to come out this summer, you know, if everything goes well. But this is one of the the most, you know, the biggest, most anticipated movie in the last 30 years that, like, so many people are in love with Top Gun. And now Top Gun 2 is coming out. And you have the F-35, the Joint Strike Fighter, and the F-22. These are our two airplanes that the taxpayers have spent the most money on that nobody knows why we spent so much money on them other than that they're really fucking cool why didn't you use one of those airframes as the star of top gun 2 right. to sway public opinion and push them onto wow i'm glad we have those right. you know rather than using an old airframe like hornets that are freaking 25 years old yeah. it's like you kind of miss the mark here on it's the government <laughs> i mean yeah you know who knows but I mean, I want to see an F twenty two kicking ass because that makes me like, like, oh man, that's a that's a badass airplane. I'm glad we got that. And Russia doesn't have. That. I just know it. It's gray and it flies. Really yeah, fast that, that's has, like, that's the extent that of I. On it. That's me too. Yeah. Like, I think you're the only. You're one of one percent that understands the difference between an F twenty two and a, you know, an F sixteen. Fine. Truly, <laughs> no. You, I like you're that probably you're the only person. Like just... you're probably one of the only people. You know, you can explain this, which is what does F actually mean? What is the difference between airframes and how they're identified? Fighter, exactly. Okay. But what does oh, do you AC? Know, do you know what? Do you know what does what, AC mean? But I, I, I got to ask you this: Do you know what a Tomcat is? Do you know what an F fourteen is? Well, I know what F. I know what do F you know class what a Tomcat means. is. I know what. Of course, uh, but if you're why. Why do you know what a Tomcat is? Because I, I, I know what cats are. I know because what male cats Top are. Because of Top Gun. Everybody no. knew what an F-14 was because of Top Gun. So if you wanted to educate the public on a new airframe and get them excited about something they didn't understand, this well, was I your mean, chance. From my, and we've talked about that. I'm, I, I love this. I always ask Jared about F-22s and F-35s. Like I, I geek out not nearly as much as you, but I, I would assume it's because the the government's not ready to have that technology under like portrayed in media. Uh, I don't think, I don't think, I think it's, it's just because a, there is, there is plenty of unclass. I mean, you still have the F 22 demo team that goes out to air shows and they do the Cobra head attacks and they do this, the, the vertical stalls and stuff like that. So it's like, there are plenty of really, really cool things that we openly show the public about the airframe yeah. that you could, that you could put in this movie. But I think that's across the board. Like any well-known exploits of the U S military are based off of Hollywood depicting them in some way. Like everyone knows what a specter gunship is or a C one hundred thirty, AC one thirty, because probably AC attack. Yeah. Probably because of call of duty, modern warfare when that came out or yeah. whatever video game when they were shooting it. Right. right. Just, yeah. Without a doubt. And just like a lot of the big operations that people know about and or specific military units within special operations, hashtag Navy SEALs, is because there's so many films about them. And then the, there's that romanization about that unit's capabilities based off of what how they're portrayed in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. But then you don't like there's reason that some units that we know aren't in any films because right. we don't want anybody to know about them. Right. Hopefully. Their acronyms aren't even out there. Yeah, their acronyms they're, aren't We don't there. even know what they are. They change them. Every so if, if, if you say AC... And then you say C, what does what are those things? C is cargo. Cargo, right? Yes. So these are these are interesting things where MC. I think that we know and we kind of throw things Multi. out. Where we're like F fifteen or F twenty two, A C C. What are those things? Right? Yeah. Utility yeah. helicopter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that. Right. Attack Utility hel helicopter. Attack helicopter. But platform, we always say those things. And helicopter. how many people actually know what they mean, though? Yeah. Right. So we throw it out just like it's a luxury item for us. It doesn't fucking matter. Well, because we yeah. worked around them, but not yeah. a, most people in the military, I'd, I'd venture to say, have never flown in a little bird before. No, no, no. Like, there's no way. I mean, and I, that's not discrediting. No. That's just the realization of like, there's, there's that, only that, that, that's across everything. Like an engineer would know everything about how to build bridges and what all that shit looks like yeah. in the military. I have zero clue. I've never been zero. in a lot of different military vehicles, you know, I mean, a lot of them. 
I've been in LM in an LMTV before because yeah. Black Rifle created the greatest coffee truck on the wheel. So <laughs> they, you know really Black Rifle coffee is. Yeah, they really did. Yeah, they really did. Our premium rest order coffee company. Hey, that hey. We do. you know yeah. what's next? That that is, is that a C one thirty. The Black Rifle coffee C one thirty. That that is a good. Yeah, that's yeah, a good I like point. That. The other hey. the other point that I have to make here is that the exclusive coffee subscription is a fucking incredible option for most people because you get small batch <laughs> premium <laughs> micro lot coffees to your doorstep every month uh 25 uh they they work their way through increments so you, it's basically 25 dollars straight to your door but these are micro lot coffees that we go to these countries we source the coffees we work with a lot of the growers we do all the design work on every aspect of this. We profile the coffees. I, I guess we do all the design work regardless, but uh, these are highly curated coffees that I'm super, super proud of. Um, so go out, join the ECS if you get a chance, or just join the join the subscription in general because and it's a fucking incredible. Be excited for when it's the an incredible drops. option and value and value and yeah. value. Cool. I don't really drink any coffee besides the ecs anymore i don't either <laughs> I'm i don't either. silencer smooth listen i've yeah. been a you know i'm just a murdered out kind of guy every day yeah. four times yeah. a day making your shower <laughs> coffee hey my shower coffee's good yeah well that's if you skip the e coli that yeah. you put in there that didn't yeah. come from us i mean i'm almost better i'm, I'm a little slow all right. All well, right. On that note, thanks for listening, guys. The free range, free range American. American. We will stay catch safe you. in quarantine, people. Yes, stay safe. God bless you all. Catch you Bye. Soon. Thank you, Dave.